How's everyone doing tonight? Good, thank you. Good. Was it a good refresher for you, Milo? Uh, oh, yes. I mean, the whole course? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I need, I always just, you need to practice it all the time. Yeah. Because I, I still got stumped. I had to go to your video several times. Yeah. Easier the second time around, though, right? It is easier the second time around. Okay. That's good. Even though you told me I was the best student you ever had, <laughs> I still, still need a little extra work. <laughs> Well, it's always good to keep keep practicing. <clears throat> when does navigation two start? Next week. We're going straight into it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> no break this time. All right. You know, you do you think there'll be a celestial class next um, next semester? Yes. Or not, uh, it'll be um, in the summer. Oh, cool. So I do it once a year in the summer. Okay. So it usually starts, I think I have it on my PowerPoint that I'm going to show you. Okay, the great. The schedule. So, yeah. Thank you. Cool. So there's a way for us to download the uh, classroom, all the materials onto our desktop so we can keep it? Yes, so um, all of it is on PDFs, and you just um, download it or save it um, on your desktop. So at some point, though, if we don't do that, it'll go away. Correct. Okay, so I got to so, make sure I'm doing this right. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to um, start a new class January the second or third Wednesday in January, and um, and I'll add, I'll take you guys off of it and add um, the new roster. So, okay, thank you. All right, well, we got a couple people here. Thanks for coming. Um, let's see. We'll start with my little, um, it's a short PowerPoint, yeah. and then um, I'll go in for questions on the final. Uh, let's see, let me share. Oh, it's not on the right one. Hold on. There. Okay. Okay, so we made it to our last day of Coastal Navigation 1. Um, I hope it was beneficial for everybody. Um, one of the questions I got a lot was um, sailing versus power and how that is going to change our um, voyage plan or plotting. So we'll go over that and then um, some recommended next classes to take after this one and then also what my 2021 schedule is i don't know what the entire schedule is but i know what mine is so that's what we're going to do today um yeah let's get started cool so um sailboat versus power i to caveat before i start into this i'm not a sailboater um Probably many of you know uh, know more about sailing than I do, but um, it isn't too much different than how we would plot out our courses. You still want to plot a course from point A to point B the quickest possible route. The caveat comes in when our heading, wherever from point A to point B is, um, happens to be in that no-go zone. Right, so wherever the wind is coming from, there's a uh, 45 to 60 degree angle on either side of the wind that um, we can't really sail in. So we need to alter course to sail around that no-go area or just steering too high into the wind. So um, we go to 
the next slide. Here we go. So say our course goes through this no-go zone. I copied this little image here for my no-go zone and my arrow. And we can go just below it. So not in the no-go zone, which is not on our course. Um, but we want to make note of that course, whatever course we're steering, um, so we can DR later on. And then when you get to a spot, the other thing to keep in mind is you don't want to um, deviate too far away from your course line. So yes, you're going to have to tack your way upwind, but the wind can change, it can shift, and maybe it's going to shift to your favor. So um, in this case, if we were, if the wind was backing and veering over um, closer to the north, it would be in our favor. So we would want to be already close to track once that wind um, changes, which it can die down, it can change direction, you know, it's, um, it can do all sorts of things. Um, so anytime you tack, you want to note the time and the new direction. So again, we still have our no-go zone and we have to sail away from it. So we kind of do this a few times on my little slide here. Um, and we get this tacking where we have a longer leg and maybe a shorter leg and a longer leg and a shorter leg, but try not to deviate too far from our track line in case the wind um, changes. So when we do our tacking, we want to note the course, our speed, and the time of change so we can get a DR. So it would be ideal if we can get a fix every time we change course, but sometimes, most likely, if we are tacking, we are not getting three bearings all simultaneously at the same time, right? So we want to um, get a DR for each time. Each time, you know, we change our speed, we change our course, we get a new position, we put a new DR. So um, you want to remember to put those, those DRs in so you have a better um, estimate of uh, where you are and where you're going and if there's any hazards along those way. Um, and try not to go out, mo I would say most of you guys don't, but try not to go out um, not knowing what the wind is doing at all. Um, Windy is a great website. Um, have you guys seen that one? It's, yes. it's very pretty and animated and it all flows and it's nice. Um, weather Passage, I used to use weather or Passage Weather all the time. Um, and then just even your um, National Hurricane Center NOAA website has tons of weather maps. If you're actually looking at those lows, those uh, swell heights, um, they have, you can isolate what you want to look at, water temperature, um, all sorts of different things on that um, website. Kind of tedious to go through. But, um, do any of you guys have favorites? I wanted to hear from you guys on uh, weather apps or websites that you use. NOAA broadcast uh, over the radio, like on a loop. Yep. They have their radio broadcast. I have Predict a Wind. Predict Wind? Yeah, Predict Wind. Predict Wind. I'll check that one out. Cool. All right. Well, um, that was kind of my spiel on weather or um, sail. Again, not that different if you are in, you know, two thirds, if you are going two thirds where the wind is not. It only changes if you are heading into the wind and you just want to remember to not veer completely off course, um, but try to try to stay as close as possible. Um, as far as next classes go, uh, Coastal Nav 2 is starting next week. So same time, 6.30 to uh, 
Zoom, just like this, Google Classroom. Um, and that is starting next week. We are going to be covering um, new topics. So we are um, kind of moving uh, forward. We're not forgetting what we've learned in this class, but moving to um, set and drift uh, for the first two weeks and then calculating tide. Um, we might get to calculating current, but we mostly focus on tide. Um, they are very similar. And then the last day we do a final or we do a voyage plan and um and then uh oh uh gps i do a little lecture on how gps works um so even if you're not completely comfortable with all the topics that we covered in this class um we kind of just build on to it right in coastal nav 2 um we will be you know plotting latin long um course and distance dr little bit of um, compass correction and that's and then we're adding on to those kind of uh, basic skills so um, you're more than welcome to join that class I am also going to be teaching that class in um, in March so if you don't want to do it this time March is another great time to to do coastal map two again um, I do the summer work weekend workshops. So that's just um, a three hour class on Saturdays. Um, each, each month we do uh, like three or four. And so two of them have been based on uh, this class, Intro to Nav. Um, so I don't think you need to take that. Um, but there is a rules of the road one that could be, that, um, that would be, a good complimentary class for this. It's just a three hour one on the weekends. Um, I'm trying to get a radar one, just a three hour radar intro, but um, they haven't been approved because they don't know for sure when we're gonna have our radar simulator. So uh, that one didn't get approved this year. Maybe it will later on. I don't, I'm not exactly sure, um, but um, then we have uh, electronic navigation. Now that one, um, a lot of people take after this class. It's just uh, a two day, so it's two weeks. Um, I'm not exactly sure what days they do it. It's not Wednesday, so it might be Tuesdays, same kind of thing, 6.30 to 9. Um, the first day is in the classroom learning basics about electronic navigation, and then they go down to each boat. They go to the Betty, the Mialusha, and the Nordic Star and um, play around with the nav instruments and the electronic navigation so that you can see three different types because it is hard to teach this electronic navigation class when whatever type you're actually working with on the boat that you're on is probably going to be different. Um, so there is very similar features, very similar, like, how do I get a waypoint? How do I go from this course to this course? Bearings, headings, all sorts of things. So you kind of work on three different types and see um, how those types work the first day. And then the second day of that class, uh, you take the Mialusha out using the um, electronic navigation and practice navigating with it. So do you, very- do you have the days for that? Available to you right now? Um, are you saying is the class available? Do you have those dates? I don't have the dates. They're not published on the website. Um, I know they they just got approved last week. Um, last week was the first week that they started having classes in person. Um, they are limited sizes. So room is room in each class will be a lot more limited than it usually is. Um, I, I got an email asking if I wanted to teach it, but I don't want to, my personal preference is not to meet with people in person just yet. Um, so I am not gonna do that one, but they're trying to get someone else to. Uh, so hopefully they'll, they'll have that one soon posted. 
Um, another cool one is the underway navigation and anchoring at sea. So that is a full day course. Um, so it's one day, all day, and you get to go underway using practicing your nav and practicing anchoring. Um, so that one's really cool. I would definitely suggest that. And then a lot of people really like that um, diesel mechanic in a day. They have that once a month, sometimes during the summer or busy times, they'll do it twice a month. Um, and a lot of people really like that one. We have an actual uh, like training engine that, uh, that we work on in the boathouse. Um, and then you'll, I think you do go out to the boats and look at those engines as well. But um, that's a great class. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, and those are my kind of my suggestions for other places to go from here. Um, for those of you doing um, 100 ton licensing or wanting to get their captain's license, unfortunately, we are um, not approved to do all of those in classroom sessions. So we have partnered with um, US Captains Training Online. Um, they have an online course and a virtual course. Um, and they, so you can do all your training, all of the different modules um, online. The so online course, you just do it on your own and watch videos and PowerPoints and things. The virtual class, they meet um, twice a week in person, or not in person, uh, via Zoom. And um, so you get to ask questions and stuff that way. So that's really cool. And then you can test. OCC has partnered with them to um, take your final exams to test at OCC. So we are their proctor. Um, and I do tutoring for that. Um, if you wanted extra tutoring, I can definitely help you with the 110 license. Again, for me, I do everything um, online this year. So in this, in this format. Um, but I know some of you guys were, were interested in the 100 ton. So definitely check that one out. Um, and then for me, I, these are my classes. If you're interested in still working with me, um, I do all, my plan is to continue doing online um, until we have a significant change in, in our pandemic. I have a compromised immune system and I'm just being cautious. So all of my classes are online. OCC has been okay with that. Um, and I'll do Coastal Nav 1 and 2. 1 and 2 kind of all back to back at the beginning of the year. And then in June, we'll do those workshops. Um, pr so probably in June, we won't have that radar one, possibly in July. Um, I'm not teaching classes, or possibly in August. I'm not teaching classes in July. And then, okay, so here's that celestial question. The 2021 celestial is going to start August 10th. So it's actually kind of at the end of summer. Um, and going to September. So we do a, um, what is it, eight week or six week? I don't know how many weeks that is off the top of my head. Um, lecture like this. And then um, the next two Saturdays after we finished all of our lectures, we I do do um, in-person Sunfix and Starfix on the Newport Pier. So we meet at the end of the Newport Pier and um, shoot the sun for noon fix, and then shoot the stars at sunset. Um, and then we have a follow-up Zoom following right after that. So that's a celestial course, and then we'll do the fall um, Coastal Nav 1 and 2 session again. So that's my schedule. Um, I also do tutoring throughout, so um, always available for that. You can either call the OCC um, front desk or talk to whoever's at the front desk and they could arrange it, or you could email me and that's fine too. Um, that's pretty much it. 
Um, I would like a pre very much appreciate if you guys can fill out a class evaluation. Um, I did put the form on the Google Classroom, um, but once you complete it, you do get a $10 voucher um, to go in another class. So that was kind of a little advertisement sales pitch on uh, all the other classes you could spend spend your time with. Um, but if you do the survey, and I want to make this online experience as beneficial to you guys as possible. So please give me honest feedback on on what can uh, what we can improve here. So I know it's not ideal, but um, that's what we're doing so far. So, any big questions? Can you post the link in chat so we can uh, click on it? Yes. Hey, can we find yeah. if you're not talking, putting your stuff on mute? It's hard to hear. All right. Um, any questions on the um the final assignment? Where's my final assignment? I have one question. When you do when you do a bow and beam, that's an estimated position. Um, it's not quite an estimated position because we're using we are creating two LOPs, a uh, a distance and a bearing. So that's not really an estimated position, but it is. Um, they like call a running it fix. No, it's it would be a fix because we have two LOPs, or yeah, yes, fixed. kind of like a running fix. Well, it's called it's called a special case bearing. Um, I just nickname it the bow and beam because it's a bow and a beam. <laughs> um, there's many other special case bearings um, if you want to look those up um, for quick references. <laughs> So I just put a circle with a dot in it, or what, what yes, do I do? Yes, I would do a circle with a dot because it is uh, two LOPs. I I want to say just the caveat of it is that unless you're actually measuring it, that it's forty five degrees off the uh, off the bow on either side and exactly on the beam, then then you don't really know. <laughs> so it is more of a guess. But I would I would still mark it as a fix. Okay. I guess it's not really officially in uh, in Bowditch as a uh, a type of question, type of fix. But it's a it's a good good one to have in your back pocket. All right. Um, I didn't I didn't really have any questions, but I mean I had to go to the video for the. The running fix and the bow and beam. Yeah, you know, those because ones. I... So I, I think, uh, who emailed me? Um, I th was it John maybe emailed me? He has a good way of explaining uh, a running fix. Yeah. Might help some people in a different perspective than, than me. Are you, are you there, John? Uh, yeah, I, I can try. I I have to say, my uh, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time staying connected. I keep on losing this signal, so I've had to log in four times already. So if I uh, crash halfway through, you'll know what happened. But um, yeah, I I didn't I did not understand the the, the basic concept of a running fix either, and it gives you a, an LOP. And then I didn't understand the rationale of advancing that a particular time period. What, but what finally made sense to me is that I 
kind of realize that once you've taken that first LOP that you can select uh, two or more locations on that, on that LOP. And if you assume that your direction and your speed stays the same and say it's half an hour, then half an hour later, you can move that you know, further down the map. And, and, then, and then if you connect those two points or those multiple points, that will give you another bearing line, which is parallel to the original one, but it's just been advanced in, into the future. And then, and then you take your, your second LOP, which can either be on the first object or on a second object, and you now have two uh, uh, LOP. You're breaking up there a little bit, John. You have two LOPs that then cross at the latest time. He's at the same time, sort of, you know, one correct. And that, and that gives you the new location. Cool. Thank you, John. So you're kind of wincing like maybe I, <laughs> maybe I confused you. Does, yeah, does that no, make sense? Uh, just, I, yeah, I try to explain it different ways, but hopefully, hopefully uh, you guys are getting it a little bit more. All right. And then the bow and beam, I mean, like I, I plotted it, our, the, the track line. So you just basically use your triangle and you're 45 degree from where you see something and you mark that. Yep. And then, uh, then you use the track line again, but now you, when you get to that spot in your 90 degree summit, you mark that. And then now you know how far you've gone and then you know how far you're away from that spot. Yep. Yep. So I just, I think I just need more practice doing it because I, I went there and I go, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> so, so then I had to go to your, go to your video. Yeah. But. All right. Let's see. Hey, the, the final assignment that we completed for today yeah. Did we, and I apologize because I could probably dig through the email and look. Did you send the answers as well? I completed it, but wondered how we would check it. And I thought, well, maybe you already sent us those. Shoot, I did not send them to you and Kim. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I will send them right now. Okay, thank you. Bree, one question I have, uh, it seems like throughout the course I've consistently been 0 0.2, 0 0.1 off, uh, and you uh, gave some comfort in like week two saying it's okay if you're at like 0 0.1 and the answer is 0 0.3, uh, not going for the, uh, the 100 ton license or anything. Is that still kind of within the normal? Yes. Uh, operational border? Okay, good. Thank yeah, you. That's totally fine. If um if you are, if anyone here is doing the hundred ton um exams, my recommendation is to plot it everything like you would, and then if you can't figure out which one it is, I like to plot, you know, choice A, choice B, choice C, choice D on the chart and see how they compare to yours because they are actually more spread out than you think when you're just looking at numbers. Um, so if you're taking an exam just to actually vis visualize where they are in the chart, um, that helps too. But if we're not very quick at plotting latitudes and longitudes, it can be time consuming, but 
That's why you guys can practice and get real quick at plotting Latin longs. Yeah, I do have a question, but it's unrelated to the final um, assignment. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's pertaining to converting true course to compass course. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do in the event that you do not have a deviation table? Um, reason why I ask is on boats that I've owned, boats that I've chartered, people that I've boated with, um, typically we would not defer to a deviation table. So in this instance, do I just take, and granted these aren't huge vessels, I mean, you're looking at boats probably under 40 feet. In that case, do you just go with zero, zero, zero for the, for the uh, deviation? I would say yes, you can go zero, 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 but know that you aren't taking deviation to account. So maybe get more deep, plot your position more frequently to double check that you're still on course and not drifting one way or the other, um, as well as you can make your own. Um, if you are in your own, in a stable spot somewhere in the harbor and you change your heading to about, I like to say, eight different bearings, um, and you're somewhere in the harbor, you have lots of things to take bearings of around you. So you can see what your compass, what your compass is, uh, when you're pointing one way and you know, you know where you are, you're in a stable position. Um, maybe you're at anchor or on a mooring ball or something. Um, and you plot, you know, I'm headed exactly at this buoy. This is what my, um, my heading reads. Well, on the chart, this is what it is true. I know what my deviation is. So then I could calculate my deviation for that heading. And you do that for about eight different headings around the compass, and you could create your own range of a deviation table. Okay, thank you. That's called um, swinging the ship. Okay. Or I guess it's not a ship, a boat. Yep. But. Thanks very much. Yeah. Okay. Still working on that email, Tim. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I was looking to see if it, I'm gonna print it and check. I've, I've done the homework in advance, I want to see if I made any errors so that I can ask you what I did wrong. Okay, hold on. Okay, I just sent it.
Well, I don't have uh, any new information for you guys, but I will be hanging out here answering questions for the rest of the night. Um, just give me a holler. Thank you. Email received. I'm printing cool. those now. Thank you. Cool. So for Coastal Map 2, what additional materials are we going to need? So um, the only additional material I would say is the a radar plotting sheet. Can we see that? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, they are at the front down at OCC's office. I do have it on the Google Classroom as um, a, a single paper, but it's kind of shrunken. It's a lot smaller to work off of. Um, if you if you don't have them, it's not the end of the world. It's just a uh, practice for week one. Um, I usually just give them out to people in class, but unfortunately we're not there. Um, and other than that, we'll be using both charts. And then um, I will be working with the uh, tide and current books, but uh, I have it printed off or I have um, the pages that we're gonna use, the selected pages, um, already um, printed out that you guys will get in your packet. Um, I think they're going out this week. And then um, I did put a lot of other questions on there from uh, just Coast Guard questions for practicing set and drift and um, calculating tide and current. However, with the Coast Guard problems, they use uh, the 1983 tide tables the 1983 East Coast tie tables. So I'm sure you don't have those. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so you are you can get those, but I also have the digital PDF version of all of those tie tables as well. LT. So um, you don't really need anything. You have it on PDF, but some people like the paper version. Okay. And uh, the new books that you mentioned, um, is there relevant information outside of the uh, chapters that you're uh, recommending that would be worthwhile reading? Or is that, you know, take or leave optional style? Um, take or leave op optional style. Um, on the Coastal Nav 2, there is um, readings. I think it's like chapter 13 and 14 in a different book. I honestly don't even know what book they came out of. Um, I just have the PDF form, the PDF version of it, and printed those, or they will print them out and put it in the packet for you guys to read. Cool. So you don't have to buy a book or anything. Um, other than that, I know Chapman's has a lot of practice problems in that. Um, let's see. What other books? So I use... Well, those aren't really for you guys. Um, oh, for so long. Okay, so. okay, let's look on the screen. So I love Dutton's navigation. I think they have the best illustrations. Let's see. But do they have practice problems? I know they have, let's see, what would you guys be doing? Uh, dead reckoning or... What were we wanting to do? Running fixes, right? Where's running fixes? Hold on. <coughs> I 
And 10.55, I see gay. Okay, so um, like this one, this is Dutton's. They have uh, running fix, an example, and then they have a solution. So they don't have it like um, written out, but it is um, just a random ship is on this course at this speed. Light bears this, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, so it kind of works out different examples and solutions just in text. So that might be helpful for you guys. Um, and they do that on a lot of the topics they cover in Dutton's. Um, Chapman's. Let's see. Um, they typically have it at the end of, it's like it's usually a different color. Um, let me go to an actual navigation chapter. What is the name of the book you're looking at now, Brie? Um, Chapman. Chapman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so 581. Let's look at five. Got a weird bring the thing down, right? So right here. Okay, so I knew they had tied, at least tied in current problems um, in, Dut in Chapman's. So they have examples, problems, and solutions using what you have in, um, in the book, in this book to solve the problems. So it's just kind of like a few at the end of each chapter. Um, and then... My last one here, these are the, uh, they call them the Murphy Guides. Murphy is the author, I guess that's why they call them the Murphy Guides. But these are the um, Coast Guard license exam um, questions. So it's literally just, these are all chart plotting questions. It gives you a deviation table, a position gives you bearings and asks you a question. So all of these are chart problems um, and questions, multiple choice questions for the um, uh, Coast Guard training charts, which are not what we used in this class. But you can get them for like, like 15, 20 bucks um, probably at OCC, but I know you can get them online for about 15, 20 bucks each. So if you want more practice, that's what I suggest. Um, the books I like, <laughs> um, this is Rules of the Road. Your typical Rules of the Road book looks like this. Hopefully you've all seen one of those before. Um, but this Rules of the Road book is a little bit different. It has all of the rules. So if you could see, we have the, um, this book, let me get to something like this, is divided up where you have international rules on one side, inland rules of the road on the other. So for every page, international inland. In this book, you have the actual rule um, for international and inland. And then on the other page is kind of a um, layman's explanation of what that rule means. So they have little 
diagrams to help you explain it. Um, so just kind of break down the rules in more um, everyday terms instead of the legal legalese um, that sometimes when you're reading the rules, it sounds like. So I do really like um, this book, The Rules of the Road. Um, I don't really know if this one is really prevalent to you guys, but the um, watch standing guide for the merchant officer. So it goes on um, watch what your responsibilities are, different site types of bridge equipment, voyage planning and record keeping, compliance, um, shipboard emergencies, ship handling, arrivals, departures, etc. So it's it's a small book, but um, has some good little guides or rules of thumb. I like that one. Um, and then this guy is the the Bible of Navigation, uh, Bowditch. I don't know if you guys have heard of this one. Um, this one is allowed in um, in the Coast Guard exam. It's actually this one that's allowed <laughs> in the Coast Guard exam. It's the small one, which is volume two. The big one, volume one. Um, has just tons <coughs> of information about navigation. Um, great, great book to look through. It is kind of wordy. If you were to pick between um, Bowditch or Dutton's, I would go with Dutton's. It's a little more uh, user friendly. But online, there's like the out of date editions or older editions for pretty cheap of any of these books and um, those are great you don't need the uh, latest edition of anything so um, get an old edition for pretty cheap and that's, that's a good deal if you got you know if you're looking to get a nautical library going on cool thanks yeah I don't know what else. That's what I got for you, really. So when you were talking about the other courses, um, how do you know what uh, uh, the school is actually doing for the uh, pandemic so that, uh, you know, we don't uh, risk lives by going there? I do not know exactly. No, I know that it's definitely a maximum of 10 people per class. Um, and they clean down all the boats um, after each class, sanitize all that. Um, I haven't been down there in so long. I don't know exactly, um, you know, if they have something set up to do the kind of lecture things in the outdoor environment or, um, or what. All of the in-classroom stuff that I know of is um, still online. Okay, that makes sense. Or or not at all, I guess. Um, yeah, it's either been canceled or or online, like in this format. So, yeah. Bree, thank you very much. You're welcome. I went through everything, and it was close enough that we're still alive. And we, good, we got that's there, good. We got there on time, so. Thank you, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Sounds good. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say thank you, too. It's a lot of information, but it's surprising how much we learned. And I actually kind of like this format because I can spread out all over my kitchen table. So it kind of, <laughs> it kind of worked for me. Good. I'm glad. Okay. But, but thank you again, and I'll see you next week. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Myla. Have a good one.
Okay, bye. Thank you, Brie. I'll see you next week as well. All right. Bye, Tara. Bye. Thanks. See you next week. Bye. Bree, not not to ask the question again about uh, how how far is still safe. So, at least when it comes to running fixes, I still seem to be about 0.5 off. Like, so for example, the 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 answer is 41 degrees 24.7. I got 41 degrees 24.1 longitude 70 47.6. I got 47.9. So I'm still thinking I'm. Maybe it's the bringing down the lines or something, but I'm clearly not quite getting to the dot that I'm supposed to. Uh, it is the video, and I haven't done the video first. And do you kind of slowly do the answer to number four on the running fix on that? Yes, I would definitely look at the video and um, maybe even try plotting the latitude and longitude of the answer that I put down yep. and comparing it to where uh, yours is. Yeah, because I'm very close. It's just, I, I think it, for whatever reason, I'm just not intersecting the lines correctly or, or something. And I sure don't want to run aground. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can maybe take a picture of it and send it to me I'll, and I could try to look at it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do the video. and Or try and the I'm video, gonna... yeah. And I start class next week as well. So I'll, I'll just keep drilling into this. And if I can't figure it out, I will. I'll take you up on that and I'll send you the picture. Okay. Yeah. And, and by the way, my dad is a, a ring knocker. So he has really enjoyed the fact that I'm taking this class with you. So it's been really great. Very, very cool. My thanks as well. Very cool. Well, thank you. Hey, Bri, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to um, drop off as well. And, All right. Um, I'll see you uh, next week. Also, thanks for your uh, follow-up information on a couple of my emails. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Michael. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. Hi, Bree. It's Shelly. <laughs> hey, Shelly. I had a nice time in the classes. I definitely have, <laughs> have a lot of studying to do. But I was going to ask you, do we get any type of, sir, you know, like saying that we took this class or anything? Because So um, we did not just give out certificates that say that, but um, for whatever reason you want to, um, Starting tomorrow, I think it takes a day, oh. um, you could call the front desk and oh. they can print out your transcripts. Oh, great. Which have the hours um, completed that says you completed Coastal Nav 1, yeah. um, okay. which should fulfill any um, of yeah. those requirements yeah. needed. Yeah. So it's it's just kind of a copy of the transcript. So it's not like a fancy certificate. Yeah, I got mine for Florida already. I already took that course online, but it was really simple. It's just the basic, you know, rules and all that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah. So I would I would wait a day. Um oh, no, I'll wait a while. Yeah. I I don't have to have it immediately or anything. I just wanted to add it to everything else. It's good for insurance too. For they sure. Know that you're, you know. Yeah. Or if you're going on a trip and charging a boat or something. Um, oh, we're buying, we're in the, you know, we're going to be buying and living on a trawler. So very cool. Adventure. Yeah. So they're going quick. People are buying boats left and right. It's unbelievable. All the good ones go quick. <laughs> Bree, I think I have one, one last question. And that's yeah. how how hard is this to do when you're actually out on the water? I I feel I I get most of it. I can get to the right answer, but it takes me a long time. I I I've come to the conclusion that the parallel rulers are not the most efficient, especially on this last problem because anything up in the corner of the map you're so far away from the compass rose that 
<laughs> there's a lot of moving. So I'm, um, I'm going to go get the yes. tri triangle for, for the, the second I would, class. Yeah, definitely. Even just the uh, role plotter, the, the parallel rulers are just sometimes very awkward because you have to use both hands, right? Um, and yeah, but um, you get better and better at it the more you practice and keep practicing when you're out at sea, even when navigation isn't a huge priority for you. Practice, you know, plotting your Latin long from the GPS or whatever it is. Um, and you'll de it'll definitely get easier and easier. So it's possible to do it underway. I know it seems impossible sometimes, but you can do it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my biggest fear is there's just by, by the time you get all the calculations done and uh, you've already moved uh, <laughs> pretty far from where, 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 where you were when you took a fix. And I, I do remember an experience I had trying to do this while we were underway in somewhat rough seas on, on a sailboat. Um, it's very difficult to make any straight marks. On the yes, yes, it, it can get very challenging. And as you, as you keep practicing, you kind of learn those little um, shortcuts for you, you know, like um, you may be waiting until something is at an easy, you know, zero, four, zero, you know, solid zero, nine, zero line you could, be, you can draw in. Um, I always do my times on the six minute so I can do a 60 D street quickly in my head and I don't have to go to the calculator for it. Um, and just kind of being really precise when you need to, but kind of estimating when you when you can, um, just to save that time and that stress when you're out there. You kind of create your own little shortcuts along the way. Yeah, I see that to, too. Yeah, to learn, you know, by the book and then create your own shortcuts. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and I imagine if you, if you have GPS that um, you're, you're you're doing this as a um, as as a backup, or doing it before you're underway to plot the intended course. But your 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 first slide tonight, or the second one, was was right with with a sailboat. Um, you're never really on a straight line for 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 very long. So it's exactly um, it's an interesting problem to 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 think through how you really plot your. Your your course to ha handle the wind, and once you get out there, it sort of changes uh, changes the plan as well when the wind shifts. Yeah. All right, I I uh, I'll, I'll sign off too. I really enjoyed this class, and I am registered for 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 the for the next course. So I guess I'll Ooh. see you next week. All right. Thanks, Greg. Bye. Bye.